Wow. In a world where crime is at an all time low, terrorist threats are dealt with by licorice, cute anime girls with silenced pistols, bags full of mags, and LMGs. With that out of the way, welcome to my personal favorite anime of this season, Licorice Recoil, the show where A1 Pictures once again proves how inconsistent they are. Seriously, how did they go from animating this, to this, then over to this, then back to this? And not to mention, right now, in the same season, they both have Licorice Recoil and that weird engaged kiss show that no one's talking about yeah. at all. It looks pretty stunning, to be honest, but nowhere near as stunning as Chisato, the main girl of this season, and this anime. You all know the loud ganky girl trope from anime or throw that right out the window and replace it with this queen. She's loud, mildly autistic, caring, lets her friends grab her bonga donkers, can dodge bullets like Neo from Keanu Reeves, uses rubber bullets to kill people, or not kill people, to save people, and most of all, she isn't annoying. Chisato is a dork. She falls asleep on the couch eating a bag of chips, then oversleeps and missing work. She gets overly excited seeing her. <laughs> But she can also flip on a dime and kill everyone in the room, using her gung fu like fighting style reminiscent of John Wick's Keanu Reeves. But with a nice slice of absolute bullshit in there, because she can't get shot, she just dodges every bullet. In some cases, she just straight up gnaws the gunfire and walks in a straight line while bullets fly around her like Moses parting the Red Sea. Now, obviously, Chisato is considered a top tier licorice, right? But why doesn't she work with other licorice members then? It's because she was kicked out of the licorice headquarters because of an incident in which she went a little bit too hard in the trap. Now she delivers coffee beans to the Yakuza while working at a coffee shop run by another member of the Lucas Corporation. This guy. They use this as a cover while they carry out missions. Kinda like the Bat Cave, but not at all. I'm sorry. I just wanted to include that bat pun. I mean bad pun. Ayo! Onto our other half of this fire duo. We got Takina. What is that <gasps> noise? Like, pause. Pause. Thank you. This is Takina, and this is the first time we see her in the show. Mowing down enemies who are holding one of her Lucas teammates hostage. Wait, before you get mad, goddamn. She's like Deadshot from DC Comics, but in a cute anime package. In other words, she knows what she is firing at and where the bullets are going. In simpleton words, she don't miss. Takina is a serious one, built only for work. Only has one pair of clothes, work clothes, and men's boxes. Why does she have those, you ask? It's because they are the best for combat, according to her. So in a way, they are also work clothes. Takina is basically what a standard person who was born and raised into being a trained killer for a secret organization would morph into, which is sad. Her childhood, like all the other girls that have been scripted into being licorice, have been effectively taken away, and is literally taken away every time one dies on the battlefield. Think of Black Widow and all of her fellow sister assassins that were trained from childhood, but that's where this duo combination comes in, with the two main characters, Chisato and Takina. Because of the incident with Machine Gun Kun, Takina is taken out of the licorice house, and is told to go work under a top tier licorice member. That licorice member being our favorite loud happy girl. Chisato of course, being the one who still has a very childish nature about her because of her, well, being able to live outside of the Lurker system. She is able to help change Takina for the better and have more fun and change her out of these men's boxes, of course, into something more normal for a girl to wear. The show still has quite a few episodes to go, so hopefully it will keep up with the streak of being amazing and will continue exuding so much confidence with its core characters. The last few episodes have thrown some curveballs into the plot to keep it interesting with some good plot to us. Now to address a popular fan theory. A lot of people seem to think Chisato will die by the end of this anime since it is a completely original work with no source material to go off. I'll just say, if this does happen, do it correctly. Or I will write, make sure to really show the long lasting effects Chisato had on the people around her, most notably Takina, because behind all the flashy fight scenes is the story of these two building a solid relationship with each other and helping each other deal with problems time and time again. Now anyway, about those flashy fight scenes, they are super lit bro, with gunplay taken straight from big blockbuster Hollywood films and a hate for furries that can't be rivaled by anyone. Show me more of these. Strike a nice balance between the character development, development, eh? The character development that can come with the slice of life moments. And show me excellent fight scenes that come with the setting, plot, and characters. With more banging tunes to vibe to while random mercenaries are getting toyed with by Chisato and killed by Takina. <laughs> 
Do this and you have my bank account. If this happens, I think it would be safe to say the show will remain as my favorite of the season. Sorry for the delay in the new video. I was working 11 days straight. So yeah, those are my opinions on this new show. Hope you liked the video. And maybe I'll make some more sometime. And I get a day off. Okay, see ya.